Welcome to Parent Quick Smarts for first grade unit six, where we will be delving into counting and modeling numbers to 120. In this unit, we will focus on counting by ones and tens, modeling numbers with tens and ones, and thinking flexibly about numbers. Typically, in first grade, children are able to count forward by ones, starting at one, but may have difficulty counting on from any other given number. For example, children may be able to count from one to 50 with ease. However, if asked to start at 33 and count forward by ones, they may have difficulty. Recognizing and mastering number patterns helps children count on from any given number. Let's take a look at these two rows on the hundreds chart. What do they have in common and how are they different? Notice how the ones digit is increasing by one, but the tens digit remains the same. Children must understand that each number counted is one more than the number before it, and that the ones in a two digit number repeats as we continue to count past the next 10. We see similar struggles when counting by tens. Students are able to fluently count by the decade numbers, but have trouble counting by 10 starting at a different number. Let's look at these two columns. How are they alike and how are they different? Children may describe how the left digit increases by one, while the right digit, or the ones, does not change. Up until this point, students have been representing numbers by showing the amount of units or ones. For example, a child may say that this is 26 because I counted each one. As we begin to work with tens, we encourage students to group items into groups of 10. So here we have 10, 10 more, and six ones. Once students are comfortable making groups of 10, they will begin to replace the groups of 10 with what's called a rod or a pre-grouped unit of 10. Here we see two 10 rods and six ones, which represents the number 26. A deep understanding of tens and ones allows students to think flexibly about numbers. Thinking flexibly simply means to represent a number in multiple ways. For instance, the number 53 can be represented with five tens and three ones, or it could be shown with three tens and 23 ones. This model shows the same number 53, but two tens have been shown as ones instead. This process of exchanging or trading a 10 for 10 ones helps children build a foundation for understanding the place value system. With that said, there are many combinations of 10s and 1s that could represent this number 53. This last one shows two 10s and 33 ones. Here is an example of how students might be asked to think flexibly about numbers. Shayla needs 46 stickers for a school project. She has two sheets of 10 stickers and 23 single stickers. Will she have enough stickers to complete her project and explain your thinking? Now a child may think through this by trading the 21s for two 10s to make the model easier to count. Now she can recognize that Shayla has 43 stickers, which is not enough to complete the project. Thinking flexibly about numbers allows students to have a deeper understanding of the number system. In future learning, students will break apart numbers to help them with addition and subtraction of larger numbers. Using numbers flexibly will help build fluency with place value and assist with mental math skills. This will also lay the foundation for computations with regrouping in later grades. Here are some questions that you may want to ask your child to promote a deeper understanding of the counting patterns and number representations. What do you notice about each number in a row or column as you count? How is counting from 101 to 120 similar to counting from 1 to 20? What number comes after 25 and how do you know? 
or what number comes before 63, and how do you know? How many ways can you show the number 47? We see and use numbers around us every day. You can help your child make connections to the real world by asking about the tens and the ones seen in these numbers, or simply ask them to read the numbers correctly. Playing games gives children experiences with counting and using mental math, even though some games may expose children to larger numbers than what they are familiar with at this point, this will build background knowledge for content in the future. Watching and playing sports also gives children exposure to a plethora of numbers and number concepts, whether it's the number of players on the field, keeping or comparing scores, or tra tracking statistics for a team or a player. Numbers are a vital part of our everyday lives. Thank you for joining us today for Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to support your child's education is to keep an effective communication with your child's teacher. Until next time, take a look at these websites, thinkcentral.com and elementarymath.mysdhc.org. See you next episode.